Hello there guys and gals, the Welsh Hunter here back with yet another 100% achievement slash trophy guide and this time we are getting it all in another Artifacts Monday Curlessic in the Secret Order Shadow Breach. As always this was developed by Sunwood Games, published by Artifacts Monday and it's usually available to buy for £12.49 but Artifacts have been having a mega sale lately, single and bundle games so always keep an eye out. So we play as Sarah, who is a very skilled agent in the Secret Order, who has to find a relic and stop dragons from kicking ass, etc, etc. You know, the stories are always a bit far-fetched, but they're actually so good. And the way the game plays, if you've played an Artifacts game before, it'll be no different, but it's still all fun. Now achievements are easier this time around too, like 75% as normal is story progression. Then we have to collect 24 scrolls and 25 artifacts. And the usual beat four mini games without skipping, complete hidden object puzzle in 90 seconds, etc, etc. Also, make sure that you do not use skip or any hints during the game, otherwise you'll have to do it all over again. Uh, but these are easier than ones before, and in terms of puzzles, everyone is exactly the same. So there's no random ones, so you can just follow and enjoy to your heart's content. All in all, we're looking at around two to three hours to get this game done. So, with that being said then, let us begin. And we're going to choose new game, and we're going to choose casual. And was beginner spelt wrong there? I, I, or am I just nitpicking now? Sorry, I, I'll stop nitpicking. So we're going to press, uh, we're going to skip all cutscenes by pressing and holding the B button when we get there. Now, what we're going to do then, we're actually going to skip the tutorial, obviously what it's telling you. If you use a hint now um, on the tutorial, that's fine, it doesn't actually um, go against you. Uh, but it tells us just to pick up the knife. But what we're going to do is press the select button, I'm still going to call it the select button, that'll never change. And we're going to skip the tutorial and get our first artifact right here. Now they sort of zoom in and out on screen, so the first artifact is there, the umbrella, and the scroll is on the right, just on at the bottom of the staircase. So make sure you got artifact one and scroll one, and then just interact with the box there on top of the steps, interact with the letter. I've achieved some incredible things. Yes, I have. I didn't crack my pants today. Hey, we're, we're on to a winner. Press the X button to use things in your inventory and then press A to use the box cutter. Interact with it a couple of times and we're going to grab a couple of items and then we're going to open up the van door. Now, um, what we need to do, we need to complete two hidden object puzzles in a row uh, without making more than 10 mistakes, which should be very easy. Plus, we need to complete one in under 90 seconds. So, don't worry if you don't get it this time. Obviously, there's a lot of hidden object puzzles to go, but, you know... Might as well get it all done immediately. Now, it should all be the same for you. So grab the hands from the left, put them up to the clock, and then grab that one. Uh, go over to the left, grab the uh, lightning bolt, put it down to Zeus or whatever that, uh, Pegasus, sorry. Sorry. No, it was Zeus. I was right. Grab the uh, thing off the bag and then put it up by the clock. Open that up, grab the sword. Next, go down and we can grab the uh, candle and then put that on the candelabra thing and grab that one as well. Next, over to the left hand side, grab the Pegasus wings, put that down onto the horse, <laughs> the Pegasus horse right there. Grab this thing from the right hand side, put it over to the left on the hat and grab the hat. Okay, a couple of things uh, we can do, grab the violin, which is basically in the middle of the screen there. Next, we're going to grab the book from the left hand side. Then. Now, I do start going a bit nuts, but don't start going nuts. We, I'm trying to grab something that we don't actually need to grab. Just grab <laughs> grab the glasses from the left-hand side. Then grab the... Um, there is a moon at the top. I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, we need the kingfisher, which is the bird from the right-hand side picture. We need the sh moon, which is at the top. And then the shoes which are cleverly hidden on a box right next to where the moon was at the top of the screen. So right there they are then. So grab the shoes and then you should get the faster than light achievement again. If you don't manage to get it, don't worry. We've got plenty to go through. Or you can obviously just restart the game and come back here very quickly. Otherwise, we can just press the left or right trigger. See where the plus symbol is? Sometimes we'll be able to press the Y button on there to zoom in. Press the X button on that and then you can put um, something in that particular item. This time, of course, it's going to be the sword. So do that and then press A on this statue on the back to zoom in. Press X and then put the sword and shield on him. The button prompts and everything are very easy. Um, but like I said, it just takes... If you haven't played one of these games before, it just takes you know a couple of minutes to get used to. But it's not too bad. Right, okay. 
So we're going to get the amazing thinker achievement right there. And now we can just skip this cutscene. So no worries about that, bruh. Now we're going to zoom in on the cardboard box, which is directly in front of us on the floor. We're going to pick up the toy mouse. Ah, it looks delicious. And then we can back out again, pressing the B button. Zoom in on the cat. Now there's nothing else there, so let's not panic for new. Zoom in on the cat. Get the hell out of here, cat. Zoom in on the cat. Use the toy mouse with the cat, and we can pick up the Amethyst Tart. Then we can walk back to the left area. So where we say walk up. And now we can click this thing in the middle, which I, I don't know what the hell that is supposed to be. It's a compass, actually. That's what it is. Uh, basically, that's added to the D-pad. This is basically just the game's map, So, but we never use it at all. Right. Zooming in on the cat picture there, we click on the note, and we're going to pick up this frame, So, and we can grab the item as well. Go into your inventory. We're going to zoom in on that heart frame, and we're going to click it, and we can add that amethyst heart. But we actually have to open it first. Remember to open it. So press A to open it up first. Then press the X button. Put in the heart. And that is how Iron Man 4. Hopefully Iron Man 4 will be better than Iron Man 3. Anyway. We can <laughs> now use that heart medallion with the slot. Then we can click the stuff in that drawer. Just keep clicking on it until we pick up a golden rose. There she blows. Wow. How much money is that worth, I reckon? Right. Anyway, zoom. Uh, go back out. Press the B button. Zoom in on the cardboard box. And use the golden rose with the slot on the box. Pick up the ornament. And now we can walk back to the left area. <laughs> and we can use that griffin ornament. Griffin door with the slot. Right. So basically, this is kind of like um, Simon Says, pretty much. Um, they... It appears it's always the same one. So top left, then middle left, and then uh, middle right. So that'll be the first one. You know when you've done it right, because obviously it starts changing, and the Simon Says thing goes again. Right, uh, so for the next one, it's bottom left. It's top right. It's bottom right. And it's middle right. La, 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 la. See, when it's theory wrong, unless it's actually random, but I'm pretty sure this bit is not random, so don't panic. It's very easy to follow anyway. So, bottom left, then bottom right, top right, um, uh, 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 top left, middle left, and then middle right. Sorry, I forgot my left and right there, which uh, is not what you want in a guide maker. Right, very easy puzzle. All we have to do then, we can. All we got to do is just pick up the pieces. So, um, and then just move them to exactly what the the, the griffin's supposed to look like. So, uh, very easy. Shouldn't take you more than just a you know, just a couple of seconds. So, um, obviously the roses are going to be on the outside. The griffin's going to be in the middle. When that's done, we should unlock the bright mind achievement again. If you don't finish this minigame in 60 seconds, don't panic. There are plenty of minigames we'll get done in a lot quicker time. Right, so what we can do, pick up that ruby. Now what we need to do is actually press down on the D-pad to whip out the old magic Harry Potter bracelet. Because you can't interact with it anyway. So press down. Come on, press down, damn it. Okay, there we go. Ooh, nice hands. Look better than mine. Scruffy and scraggly mine. Anyway, when we do that, we interact with the red cloud type thing. Now that we've got a little puzzle. So, for easy puzzles like these, um, I won't just I won't explain absolutely everything. Uh, it might just be easier just to skip to the end of the puzzle, just to see where everything goes, and just copy it from there. So if you want to see the end of this one, skip ahead to 9.45 just to see where exactly they go, or just follow along with the video. Very easy though, so if, if there's any more complicated ones, I'll obviously let you know, but, but puzzles like this, I'll just sort of leave you to your own devices, because it is easy enough. Right then, so when we are done here, we can talk to this guy, who is uh, 
<laughs> McGruff the crime dog looks kind of uh, McGruffy. We're going to pick up the ink which he has given us, and then we can walk up to the scroll on the left hand side and press the X button to use said ink. There we go. Oh wow, that's well, that's a magic crap right there. Right, it's another puzzle, another put in and place in puzzle. So. This time I'll let you know which ones they are, because it's not always obvious. So the green one there, use it on the, um, or the, the yellow, use it on the right, or the sort of one closest to us. The red one, use it on the hand on the left hand side. The, uh, I tried, gra oh, the yellow one, use it on the bottom left hand corner one. Grab this purple one, I think it's purple, top right hand corner shield. The white one in the middle, use that on the sword right in the middle again. The blue one, I think that's blue, use it on the left shield, or uh, cape, sorry, and the last one, use it on the ring, on the hand, and that's how you easily do that puzzle. Again, apologies with the um, colours, I'm about as useful with <laughs> telling colours as the Pope is in a brothel, so yeah, not that brilliant. Um, but again, all we have, just have to do with this bit is just realign these um, in just such an order, where they are obviously placed in a particular order. So again, if you just want to see exactly where they are, just skip to 11 minutes, 45 seconds. And this final puzzle is very easy. What we need to do is just grab the sh uh, cape, drag it over to the left-hand side on the sort of crusader thing right there. Grab the shield, grab it to the guy in the middle. Grab the sword, grab it to the dude on the right. And then finally, we can just grab the ring off the dude's hand and use it on the left-hand side guy. So, yeah, exactly what I'm not doing right now. Um... <laughs> I guess suppose we'll come back to him. So grab the necklace thing, put that on the right. Grab the uh, crown, give it to dude on the left, so second left. Grab this thing, put it on dude's arm on the right, and then ring with guy on left. Now remember, we have to finish four mini games in 60 seconds as well. Apologies, that's one thing I forgot to mention. Uh, for an achievement, so... Uh, I mean, you should get that through natural progression anyway. But all of those puzzles there do count towards that, so... Well, let's jump done. Right, so when we are done with this, we can now head to the roadside, job done. Now, one thing you also may notice is there is no sound at all. That's because Artifacts Monday loves slapping a copyright for the tiniest bit of music. So you are going to enjoy the music, um, but as for this video, it's just it's just you and I, baby. You and me. Oh, 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 oh. oh yeah. Right. So, now we are at the roadside, we're going to get the second artifact, which is the snail. It's just to the left of the guy right there, so make sure to grab that one just to the left of dude. Now we can zoom on the stone plaque behind the man, and we can pick up the satchel, or the fanny pack. For some reason, American and British people have different uses of the word fanny, which is hilarious to me. Fanny is a bum in America, and then fanny is a fanny in... Fanny is a, you know, the front butt in Britain. Anyway... We can zoom in on the satchel, and we've got the lighter and voice recorder. Um, so make sure you've got those in your inventory. Now we can walk up to the sort of bulletin board at the back. And this is another little puzzle. So what we have to do, press left or right trigger to go into your inventory. Go over to the voice recorder and press Y to zoom in. Press play. And it basically just tells you exactly how to get to the fertility. The fertility facility. So it's very easy. Um, all we have to do is just from here we need to just go up all the way up until we follow the yet and find the yellow sign Again either using your d-pad or you know your uh, left stick Then we just need to go all the way down right here until we're at the red cycle Cycle Here's the red cycle Then we need to go right until we're at the next intersection Like right there Okay, then we can just go all the way up to the top, go to the right here, and now we uh, we need to do a clockwise uh, little section. So what we need to do is go up and around. 
Because for some reason, I, I I think it was in my Kentucky's Route Zero, I got my clockwise and anti-clockwise mixed up. So that's clockwise. That makes perfect sense since it's going the same way as a clock. From here, we just need to go down to where the bridge is, go right across it, and then up. And that is how we do this little puzzle. So again, these puzzles are a lot easier. Uh, and, you know, they just, <laughs> they're just goddamn cute. Woo woo! All right, now we're all done. Right, now we can go left to the facility entrance. There's another artifact and scroll here. So the first thing we're going to look at is the um, owl in the... It's in the branch above the bear on the right. So it'll appear eventually. There she blows. Quick, grab it, grab it. There we go. Third artifact there. And the scroll is in the top left vines. So can be kind of tricky to see now and again. But there we go. So that should be artifact three and scroll two. But from here, what we can do now, we're just going to go ahead and zoom in on the old burr. Uh, not beer, bear. Little cute bear. Pick up the little branch um, by the right of him there. And then we can just back out and then press B again to back out to the roadside. Zoom in on the fire pit, which is like the stone circle thing on the right. We're going to use the branch. So go into your inventory, use the branch first. Press X, use the lighter on it. It's it's very easy. I tell you what, um, Bear Grylls ain't got nothing on the survivors in this game, I'm telling you. Um, right, we need to click the beehive until we pick up the honeycomb. And again, we can just press B there to back out. Don't need this bit for now. Now go back to facility entrance. We're going to zoom back in on the bear. And press the X button to use the honeycomb with the old pubic bear right there. Now we can pick up the toolbox emblem. And make sure to pick up the red Michael Jackson hee -hee glove off the barrier. Uh, before exiting back to the roadside. Zoom in on the fire pit once again. Sorry. I'm so sorry. Use the toolbox emblem with the slot, and now we can grab the crowbar, which we can use with the first aid kit, in order to pick up a first aid kit. Who's locking a first aid kit inside a first aid kit? Come on. Right, zoom in on the motorcycle. Oh, sorry, no, use the first aid kit with the man first. Then we can pick up the motorcycle key. Sorry, getting a bit ahead of myself. Now we can zoom in on the motorcycle. Use the motorcycle key with the hole. Wow. Then click it. Then we can pick up the hex key and the hook. So it should be another two items for you there. Now we can zoom back in on the stone plaque behind Mr. Angry and Injured Dude. Use the hex key with the nuts to get some more nuts. These nuts! Ah, oh, yeah, you got these nuts. Well done on finding these nuts. Click the plaque. We're going to pick up the random dragon horn, which is just chilling. Who's putting that right? Who is doing that? Anyway, back to the facility entrance. Now we can zoom in on the dragon mask on the left. Press X. Use the dragon horn with him. We're going to pick up the code part and the dragon tongue. So, code part out of his eyeball and dragon tongue out of his mouth hole. Again, oh, we can back out. Zoom in on the winch, which is sort of next to the purple crystals on the left-hand side right there. And then we can use the hook with the cable. So, if you want to become a hooker, this is the best part to do it. You ain't going to get paid much, though. Um, next, we can use the dragon tongue with the gem to slap that one out. We can pick it up. Then we're just going to back out. And we've got the dragon eye. So, zoom in on the dragon mask on the left again. Use the dragon eye with the slot. Rawr. Yes, I would make a very scary dragon. Ugh. Make a mong dragon me. Right, now we need to you grab the metal grating, which was on the floor. Use it on the gap on the right. And now we can zoom in on the fallen shack on the right. We need to use the glove. Hee <laughs> hee. With the um, broken picture. And we've got Kyle Gas from Tenacious D. As soon as you pick up the picture right there. So apparently his Tenacious D days are over. Nah, he looks like a badass, mind. Anyway, click on the picture and then we can... Zoom in and click on it until we get another code part. Next, pick up the ID card from the left. And then grab the Windass handle, which is behind the spoon. That one, yeah, little toy kind of looks like something you wouldn't want to ever be yeah. Right, walk up to the metal door on the left. Now, what we have to do, we have to go into our inventory now. We have to combine both code parts. So click on the code part. Then get the other code part, and then go, oh, wait, it's a full code part. <laughs> I didn't expect that one. How mad. <clears throat> so, use the ID card. Use the ID card first. There we go. Next, we can use the code. Or the code, yeah, the code part. 
<clears throat> excuse me. So yeah, use the code and then just type in 915. So the top being nine, the, the second one being one and the bottom one being five, nine, one, five. Do I have to say it again? Nine, one, twelve. <laughs> uh, sorry. Right. Anyway, so that bit is almost open. Not quite, but we've got a bolt anyway. Um, now, you may unlock the Rapid Learner achievement if you've been very quick with the minigames, but if not, again, don't worry, because I get it later on. So anyway, back to the winch on the left, we need to put in the windlass handle in the little slot o -rini, and then we also need to use the bolt with the winch, interact with the winch, and that is going to get us the Skilled Explorer achievement, because we are... <laughs> we are facility! The fertility facility! Skip the cutscene, we don't need to see the fertility facility. Sorry, I'm a rhymer and I did know it. Bruh. Right. So, a couple of things we're going to do. Artifact and a scroll first. So, first artifact, it's the red flower that is left of the lamp. So, it's around here. There it is. So, just on the floor. On to the left. Grab the fourth artifact. And the third scroll is at the end of the right railing. There it is. Leading into the room. So, that should be artifact four and scroll three. Now, we can zoom in on the console. Interact with all of the couple of items here, the module and the transparency sheet. Very posh. Click the middle button to stop it from going... Nah, nah, nah. It's the worst alarm I ever heard, by the way, from myself. And now what we can do after that bit's done, we're going to have this woman who... Man, she's looking a lot worse for wear. Her belt's not even done tidy. Come on, man. Magagi. Pick up the flash drive from Magagi anyway. And now we can pick up the transparency sheet from the left-hand side, close to where we got the fourth artifact. Now we can zoom on the broken pillar to the left of the woman. We need a couple of things here, so pick up that um, module and another transparency sheet. So that should be three transparency sheets you got now. Transparency sheet. Right, now we can go left to the generator. Another artifact and scroll here, so... Uh, let's pick up the glasses, which is just under Magagi's chair, and on the table of the leg, just right of the Magagi chair, is the fourth scroll. So, in very close proximity, that is where the scroll was, and the glasses are going to appear right. Mia, Just right to, uh, just to the left of where this last scroll was, and just to the right of the Magagi chair. <coughs> right, now what we can do... Um, we're going to do another hidden object scene. So, remember, try not to make any mistakes um, in this one. Because, remember, we needed to do two hidden object puzzles without making any more than ten mistakes. Now, remember the first one I made about ten mistakes. Uh, so, just be careful with this one. Again, with these ones, I won't tell you where everything is. Uh, just follow along. Hopefully, I've gone... Uh, hopefully, I do pacey enough that it's nice and slow and we can just chill out with it. But just make sure to be careful anyway. If you do make a mistake, what you can do is actually just completely quit out of the main menu and you'll go back into the game and you'll come back just before the hidden object puzzle. So you can just try again anyway. There she blows, lads! Master of details! Hey! <laughs> right, also if you wanted, if you didn't unlock it the first time, you could unlock faster than light as well. So make sure you've got the module by the stairs right there, right in the middle of the screen. Now we can zoom in on the computer, we're going to pick up the ignition button by the unicorn. Okay, now we can use the flash drive with the USB slot, that's how things usually work. But you have to do it once and then turn it around and then turn it around, because for some reason that's how it works. So now just pick up the blueprint, pick up printout times two, so get the blueprint and the key card right there, and then we can just back out here for now. Now we need to do a bit of combining aligning, so go into our inventory, what we're going to be needing to do, eventually. 
Um, so, yeah, it's not going to work yet because we need to go into our inventory. So we need to combine the blueprint with the transparency, transparency sheet. So you should have all three of them right there. Then we can place the sheet on the blueprint zoom. So just uh, have a look at where these sort of orange lines are. And then just go from there. So very easy. It's not really a puzzle. In fact, it's not really in anything. Okay. Now we can zoom on the crate. Which is uh, at the forefront of the screen. So zoom in on that boy. Click up the tube. And we can pick up the energy cell as well. Which is on the left hand side. So tube, energy cell, energy cell, tube. Okay, we're all good. For now, and then what we can do is actually use the key card with the slot while we <laughs> while we're here. While we're here, but put the key card in the slot, and then we can pick up the pickaxe and glass cutter. Now we can zoom in on the big chunky purple crystal, which must be worth a goddamn fortune in the back. Pick up the glass tube from it, and then we can use the pickaxe with the crystal to get one crystal piece for the story-related progression. And then really, you think you just get a couple more to sell on to make some mother flipping money later on. Maybe not, though. Zoom on the circle floaty thing on the right-hand side. Don't even know what the hell that is. We're going to use the blueprint first. And then we're going to use the modules as well. So the modules are going to be right over into the left somewhere. There they are. So modules, big sticky-uppy things. Right, so what we have to do is actually just put the module together now. So you have to do it exactly as it is. So get the right stick, sticky things first and the middle sticky things. Then the top thing. I really lost for English words today, apparently. And that's why foreigners can speak better English than me. I'm moronic. Okay, so then we need to add the nuts and then the energy cell. You have to do it in a particular order, otherwise it's just gonna, not going to work. So the nuts, the energy cell, the glass tube. <laughs> Stick it up my butt, get a hamster up there. Sorry, that's an Eminem song. And then the ignition button. And then for now, we can back out because we've got one more little thing to do in order for this to work. We need to get a hamster. We need to stick down the glass tube. Eminems are coming. Fag, fag. Anyway, back to the facility. Have a look at this big floaty football thing on the right. Uh, interact with the camera. And then you need to click the camera a few times there to watch a video, which will be this particular video. Luckily, it's nothing off the old hub. Oh, that would have been awkward for some worker. Uh, we need to zoom in on the football case again, or the bomb-looking case. We need to just pick up the metal handle at the top of it. Plus, we're going to use the glass cutter with the case at the top of it. So, use the glass cutter with the top of the case, and then click that boy. Slice it open. Man, that would come in handy to be steely stuff. But, of course, let's not do that. Walk up to the floating football orb, and then we can use the jeweled ornament with the slot. Uh, so, pack that. Now, it's another, it's basically just another little puzzle. So, just go ahead and just grab the same ones that I do. Uh, it's very, it's easy enough anyway. So, nay bother. So this is where I'm going to unlock the Rapid Learner achievement for completing four minigames in 60 seconds. If you don't yet, don't panic. There'll be plenty more opportunities for that. Uh, but what we can do then is pick up the crystal, then we can go back to the generator on the left, zoom on the circle floaty thing on the left again. Now we can use the handle with the top of this ting. It's not a hamster, so uh, M&M's lucky this time. But we get the helpful hand achievement, and we can exit back to the facility. Um, there's the helpful hand achievement. We need to zoom on the console at the bottom of the ramp. Click the right button first. Now we need to click to the draw on the left of that console. So go back into the console. Don't know why I backed out. Apologies. Uh, but you should see that little uh, gap opening up. So we need to pick up the crystal drawing. And now we can just go ahead and back out to the generator. So back out of here. Go back to the left in the generator. Generate my love for you. Uh, anyway, back on the computer, use the crystal drawing in the printer, and now we need to use the crystal piece with the printer as well. 
So check in your crystal piece, job done. By the way, by now at this point you should have two crystals after this bit. Um, it was a bit of an edit where I messed up, but I'd already put the crystal in the one um, left hand side thing. So I'll just show you now anyway. Back to the facility. Uh, let's zoom in on the broken pillar on the left of Magagi. Now th there is the um, second crystal. So again, you should have two crystals. I've already put that one in, but I edited it out because I was just messing about. So apologies about that. But you should have two crystals. You put them both in. You zoom on the console. You click on the left button. You put your left leg in. You put your left leg arm out. In, out, in, out. Shake it all about. That's the hokey cokey. And you turn it around. That's what my gaggy's all about. And onwards we move! So, first things first, artifact. Right at the top of the... Sal st what are they called? Stalactites, sorry. Like the hangy, floaty, rocky things at the top left-hand corner. We are going to be grabbing a bat. There it is, so make sure to grab that. That should be artifact 6 out of 25. Now, we can use the bracelet with the red, weird, floaty cloud. So again, press down on the D-pad. Remember, never press the up button to use any hints in any puzzles or anything like that. Just a quick reminder there. Right, there is another puzzle. So, again, what you can do is actually just skip to 31 minutes, 50 seconds to see the end result. Might just be easier for you that way. Maybe. But with that done, we should get the Wise Owl achievement. Oh, thank you very much. The, the Wise Roy Hodgson achievement. Only football fans will know what Roy Hodgson and an owl looks like. Anyway, go left into the Zodiac Chamber. And now we're going to grab another artifact and scroll. So the first artifact is, on, is like an urn slash bucket. It's on this pillar right here on the very left-hand side. Up here for me, boy. Ah, oh, thanks very much. Right, so grab that one, and then the scroll, the fifth scroll is in front of the pedestal on the right. There it is, so make sure to grab that. So it should be Artifact 7 and Scroll 5. Zoom on the pedestal after we, uh, well, we've just picked up, like, the little uh, handle type thing there, off there. So, look, zoom on the pedestal on the right. Pick up the handle, and then we back out. And we can exit back to the facility basement, the fertility facility. Click on the zoom, uh, zoom on the hourglass pillar, sorry, and then click on the note and pick up the feather. So, uh, we've picked up the feather. The note is just underneath this little diamond piece of thing right here. Now, what we can do is use the brass handle on the bottom of the hourglass. That's going to pick up the diamond, and then we can back our ass out. I'm telling you what, we're going to be rich with all the stuff we're finding, I'm telling you. Go back to the zodiac chamber on the left. Zoom on the pedestal on the right. And then we can use the feather. The feather and the French tickler, because watch your baby, he got the tools. Use the diamond, I mean. Sorry, got a bit of tenacious D in me there. Then we can click the pedestal until we read a note and pick up a dagger. And then we can just back out. And then go back to the fertility facility basement. Pick up the torch base in the bottom left hand corner. It's in a pot right there. Use Now we uh, can use the blue cloth. Well, you can use the dagger, sorry. Use the dagger <laughs> with the blue cloth, so I'm trying to say, to get the cloth. And then in our inventory, we're going to combine the torch base and the cloth after we do this hidden object puzzle. So... Again, um, you should have all the hidden object puzzles, so if you want to, you can just go around and press the A button until everything's good. Or you can just... I've, I haven't done that. I've tried being nice and tried sort of making it as calm and smooth as I can. So hopefully just following along will get you all golden nuggets and excited and tingly.
See, bad? Very tingly. So after this one, you should get the three hidden objects for not using any hints. Another little quick reminder there, do not be using any hints or anything in any minigame or any hidden object puzzles. So you should get the Precise Observer achievement, so we can go back to the Zodiac Chamber. Um, we've already got the lib Libra scales, which were right there, where the cursor was. So now we can zoom on the pedestal. We're going to use the torch with the slot. Stick that in, and then use the lighter with it. And lo and behold, well, we've got... <laughs> Yeah, let's actually do that in our inventory first, yeah. So, make it into a torch base first, sorry. I did say he was going to do that after the hidden object puzzle, didn't I? Now we can put it in the sloth, and then, lo and behold, when you use a lighter with the torch, it usually lights up, so, that's mad. Right. Darshi blows, what that's going to do is give us a little uh, sticky stoneway. little pathway, so we can click on the statue on the right. We're going to use the Libra with the slot, and we can click, there's a little bit of hanging off metal which we can grab, so make sure to pick that one up and grab that to get a, well, hooked piece of metal, and then we can exit back to the facility basement. Zoom in back on, in on the zoom hourglass, hourglass pillar, why am I struggling with that? Uh, use the hooked metal with the cracked area on the left to pick up the Sagittarius symbol, and now we can go back to the left to the Zodiac chamber. This is where the Zodiac killer f uh, killed all his Victims and chucked all their bodies in by the way. Ah, just joking. Right on the right statue using the Sagittarius with the slot And now we can zoom in on the left statue We're going to use Scorpio, which of course is the scorpion that makes totally sense on the um, Scorpion bit then make sure to pick up the bull head before backing out to the facility basement Zoom on the top of the center pillar right there and use the bull head with the slot which gives us Taurus then we can go back to the Zodiac Chamber, a lot of back and forth. Use the Taurus with the slot, then your monkey's got a big fat banana for you. Okay. So the next puzzle can, can be a bit complicated, but hopefully I'll go slow enough for you that you'll just be able to keep up. Um, so just copy exactly what I do, hopefully it's nice and slow enough for you though.
And that's the way the cookie crumbles, and that's how we do that. So hopefully, like I said, the pacing of those puzzles were easy enough that you could follow along. Apologies, though, if it was a little bit fast. So, back in, out, put the hourglass in the right-hand side one right there. We should have two achievements that we're popping up now. And, oh, well, isn't that nice and intrusive look? You piss off. Review. How about you let me play the game before I review it? You're lucky I gave you five stars, you son of a bit. But that is like me chucking up a Patreon sign um, at the top right-hand corner. It's kind of intrusive. Sorry. Anyway, um, <laughs> now and again. So now we can go forward. We've done this part. We are all good. So again, you should have had the Smart Pathfinder and the Skillful Researcher achievements. So click in the necklace, up the rope. And now we can just keep clicking forward, keep skipping the cutscenes, keep clicking forward until we get to the forest edge. Edge me. So now we've come to a druid, who's basically like Mr. Midget Dwarfy Man, but, you know, they all have fantastic beards, so... You know, who's the loser? It's got to be me, with the worst gingerest pubis beard in the world. Right, so there is an artifact and a scroll we're going to grab. The first artifact is a snake hanging from a tree just to the left of the stairs. There it is, so top left, that's where the stair, um, snake is. And hanging from the tree and to the right is the scroll as well. So that's artifact 8 and scroll 6. And now we can move on. So what we're going to do is zoom on the stump um, at the base of the tree trunk right there, so we can pick up the fishing rod. Uh, it's that time, from diamonds and stuff to um, <laughs> fishing. Make sure to move the candle to pick up the pyramid piece, then we can back out the PG tips piece. Get the one from the birdhouse on the right hand side, so you should have two uh, PG tips pieces. And then nip inside the druid's house. Artifact 9 is a small flower rug at the top of the stairs, it's going to appear, eventually. Ah, she blows luck, so tidy, that's Artifact 9, and Scroll 7 is at the top stair, there it is, at the uh, left of the stair banister right there. So, zoom in on this pod thing, well, that, <laughs> and that thing, um, pick up the couple of items from here, it's like a rune stone, and the fish. And then we need to, it's its kind of like an animal house, um, the thing on the left hand side, this thing right here, yes. So pick up the PG tips piece once again, and make sure to grab the animal house as well, so that is what your inventory should be looking like anyway. Next what we can do is interact with the table here on the right hand side, and we can grab the uh, sticky bit of honey or whatever that is, put that onto the pyramid and then use the three pyramid pieces, pyramid pieces, so that's how you make a decent cup of tea with some PG tips, but that's how we can pick up the ultimate PG Pyramid tips. Right, so for now we ain't going to do anything else from here. Uh, we're going to interact with the table at the forefront of us to pick up the green pyramid. And then we can back out and we can exit to the edge me, edge me, edge me, edge me, baby forest. I'm not going to say that every time, so anyway, talk to the druid there and we can pick up the animal wood. The, uh, the wooden animal, sorry. Zoom on the left slab, big slab with two chunky holes in it. And we can use both pyramids with the slots. So, of course, green's going to be going in green. Blue's going to be glow going in blue. That is how it usually works out. Uh, <laughs> really. And we get a little pathway to the next area. So, let's go to the old Shrek Swampy Bridge. So, that is a supposed enemy, but don't worry about him. He just literally stays there. So, we got the 10th artifact who is a sleeping animal um, in a large tree trunk in the sort of back of the middle of the area. There it is. So he's just chilling right at the very top there. So that's artifact number 10. And on the leftmost tree trunk under the dream catcher. Kind of hard to tell this one. Um, but it's just behind the dream catcher right there. So make sure to pick that one up and that should be scroll number 8 out of 24. Right, now we can use the fishing rod with the gauntlet in the water. See, we, we're not shoving these somehow all in our pockets for no reason. We got the Thanos gauntlet. Pick up the wooden handle which is next to the lamp on the right hand side right there. And then we can exit back to the forest edge and then go back into the old druid's house. 
Click on the zoom the square table at the forefront and use the gauntlet with the green bottle. It's basically it's poison, which honestly Russians just love drinking uh, poison. It's 80% absinthe and stuff. They, I don't know how they do it. So on the circle table, we're going to use the venom with the spray bottle and pick that one up. Oh, that's a pretty hardcore stuff you got there. But after we have done this. Uh, oh, it is called petrifying spray. That's funny. Then we can just go ahead and back out. What we need to do, don't go to the swampy bridge just yet. We need to interact with the um, little wooden stump again. So apologies about that one. Um, but we need to use the wooden handle with the hammer head and then pick up the hammer. Yeah, it comes in handy. Now we can go back to the swampy bridge. So apologies for just that second there. We need to use the quote-unquote uh, Russian vodka on the hammer. Then with the plants on the right. Or use the spray first and then the hammer with the plants on the right, sorry. Now we can zoom on the hanging bones on the very right-hand side. Pick up the wooden animal, the rabbit statue thing, and then back out. And then go back to the druid shrine. Right. So, now we've got a weird monster type thing right here. So, we can't actually get the collectibles yet. So, Napan, well, we can get the scroll. So, the scroll number nine is right on the floor right there. But we'll get the other artifact later on. So, zoom on the ball there at the base slab, use the hammer with a sticky out piece of stone and then pick up the next rune stone. Next we can pick up the pouch, which is already on top of there, and the other rune stones. That should be three out of seven, uh, sorry, two rune stones and the pouch, which you should have got there. So put the rune stones in the actual bowl itself. And now we can go in there into our inventory. We're going to zoom on the pouch and then we can keep clicking it. We'll try that one again. And then we can keep clicking it until we get the bat skull, that one, and the wooden animal. So there's two things there. Now we can zoom on the eyes in the tree trunk on the right. Oh, scurry. Pick up the wooden animal into the bush and then use the pet house with the bush. So press the uh, X button there, of course, and use the pet house. And we've got a little weird type raccoon looking thing right there so we can pick it back up make sure to pick it up use the empty pouch with the bush and then we're going to click the bush until all the poisonous berries are removed we're trying to kill the druid so we can move in to be honest this looks like a cozy house and i want that beard as well and i assume you're not going to let me have that one for free while you're alive of course they're not poisonous anyway make sure to pick up the berries the pouch berries back out and walk up to the stone slab on the left hand side um this is a very easy puzzle, but again, if it's easy enough just to follow along, you just got to click on exactly the uh, same ones that I do. Easy enough to follow along. And if you didn't get it, you just have to go in order of the symbols. That's that's where it was then. So, pick up the crystal. So, when we've done that, we picked up the crystal. Make sure to pick up the wooden animal at the base of the pillar right next to the stone slab. And then we can exit back to Shrek Bridge, Swampy Bridge. And then the forest edge me, edge me. What that was should get you now is the Pet Vindicator achievement. And we can pick up the flower as well from the old druid. And we can use the berry pouch with the birdhouse on the right hand side. So make sure to use the berries there, and with that we can pick up the cheeky birds of a feather. And now we can exit back to the druid's house. A lot of stuff. Man, this guy's just been chilling in all types of crap. We come along, save the day. Yeah, god damn it. Zoom onto the area then between both the windows. We can use the Myrus pet house with absolutely anywhere. So use the <laughs> Myrus is in the middle. There he is. Yeah. There you go. Well done, Myrus. Stop running off, douchebag. Anyway, pick up the wooden animal, now walk up to the right-hand wall. There it is, at the very right. And we can use the wooden animals with the slots. It's very easy. This is another very, very easy puzzle. Just put the animals where they are. It's as simple as that. But you should get the expert in toughness achievement after this one as well.
So there I was, jellyfishing and bubble blowing. Arg, 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 arg. SpongeBob, Mr. Krabs. Yeah, anyway. Right, hidden object puzzle here on the right hand side. So after we do this one, we will get a flower ornament. God damn, these are some nice looking things. Look at that flower ornament. It looks fan. But since we cannot use it, what we're going to do is click on the treasure chest and use the flower ornament on it. Click it. Pick up a crossbow. All right, handy. We could have just jabbed that open with a crowbar, but that's fine. Exit back to the forest edge, then to Swampy Shrek Bridge. Zoom on the skeleton and then pick up the arrow. Back out of here for a second. Now we need to do some inventory stuff, so... In the inventory, we're going to zoom in on the arrow. We're going to click the arrow head. And we're going to add the sunstone. Which, you know, if you want to kill a black weird cloud, just, uh, you know, get a sunstone and a crossbow. Job done. We're going to zoom. Um, and then we're going to put the sunstone arrow, sorry, of course, into the crossbow. And then from here, we can back out. Zoom on the left dream catcher, And use the feather with it. So it's all spooky and stiff. Now she goes, eventually. Zoom on the middle dream catcher, and we're going to use the uh, flower with it, because of course it's got flowers on it, so that makes all the sense, right? Red. And then on the hanging bones on the right hand side, use the bat skull with that one. And there we go. Right, for some reason, I think this is a kind of weird glitch that happens every time. We're supposed to use the. Um, our little magic bracelet, but if that doesn't work, just back out once to go back to the forest edge and then come back and it should work fine then. Uh, but for whatever reason, that wasn't working. So back out once, go back to the bridge, now press down on the D-pad, and now you should be able to use it. And it's another puzzle, we got to do another puzzle. So, very, very easy. Once again, if you want to just follow along, or if you just want to skip two... 54 minutes and 40 seconds, then you can see the end product and you can just copy it from there if you so choose. And with that, you should also get the Clever Mind achievement after we've done it right here. Da, she blows, monkey. So, Clever Mind will unlock, and now we can click on the ring to pick it up. So, make sure to pick that up. The old Elden Ring sting. And now we can exit to the Druid Shrine, which is directly in front of us, of course. That is a nice looking... Moses just making a... Sm Midget Moses making an appearance, is he? Okay. Right, use the bracelet with the monster. So, again, uh, down in the D-pad... Use it on the old shadow monster there, the shadow monster from Lost. And now we can use the crossbow <laughs> with the smoke monster. Bam. I know a lot of people got annoyed with the ending of Lost, but my good buddy Games of Dane will not have that. Lost is a good ending, he says. 
which I agree, I agree. Right, now we can go back and now we can pick up the animal um, artifact, which we couldn't get earlier on because of the shadow monster. So make sure to grab the uh, squirrel in top of the tree trunk. There it is. And remember the ninth scroll we did pick up earlier from the ground, which is right there where I'm showing you right now. So now we can exit to the relic spheres in front of us. There's a 10th scroll there, just on the right of the purple pillar. Now we can zoom on the gold orb on the right, pick up the dragon insignia and the snail shell. And then we can just back out, pick up the sunstone arrow from the left-hand side, which of course it went straight through a monster because it's a shadow. Grab the log and we're gonna use that with the left side pillar, just to knock that up a little bit. Zoom on the left pillar, Pick up the jar and the ornament, ornament base, sorry. So it should be like a circle thing and a thing thing. And then we can back out. And now we're going to go all the way back. We're going to go back to the druid's house to find some, well, rather unusual magazines. What are these, my friend? Anyway, on the circle table, we're going to use the snail shell with the bottle to get a cork. Apparently, we're not taking a drink. Apparently, all this magic stuff, we're not thirsty. We'll just leave the drink then. Fine. In the inventory, we're going to combine the cork with the jar. This is the amethyst. The amethyst, not atheist. Don't get all your knickers in a twist, all your religious types and unreligious types. Um, and then we can exit back to the forest edge. So go back over to the swampy bridge. Oh, sorry, no. Uh, use the am amethyst jar with the fireflies. Sorry, just above the stump here. Again, getting a bit ahead of myself, sorry. So, so use it with the fireflies so you get a glowing sphere, which is basically fireflies in a jar. Then we can go forward all the way to the Druid shine, Shrine. Zoom in on the base of the tree where we found Myrus, the weird raccoon thing. Use the glowing sphere with a dark area. Walk up to the tree. And it's another hidden object puzzle. Hooray! I know everyone enjoys these. And after that, we're going to get a silver star. It's not even a gold star. It just means second place. First of the losers, as it were. Uh, right, anyway, no, just joking. We get a silver star, but now we can go back uh, go back one to the swampy bridge. Sorry, again, getting a bit ahead of myself there. We're going back one. We're going to pick up the zoom on the skeleton again. Click the right arm, and we're going to use the dragon insignia with the slot on the bag. So the dragon insignia, there it was. Not no more. Pick up the silver star, and then we can just back out of here. Now we're going to be doing a, a couple more inventory things. So we're going to zoom in on the sunstone arrow. We're going to click the tip. Just the tip. Oh, yeah. Um, so click the tip. Don't get too excited, though. Oh, that, that, I'm done. We got the sunstone. Now in the inventory again, we're going to combine the ornament base with the sunstone eventually. Um, <laughs> we will do that eventually, but we're going to go back to the druid's house. So go back one, zoom on the square table, and use the silver star with the slots. Uh, get that one up, pick up the moonstone, and then exit back to the forest edge. And then we're going to go forward three times to the relic spheres. Tell you what, man, these characters on these games must be knackered back and forth, bloody everywhere. Jesus Christ. Roy Mini. So just keep going all the way forward until we hit the Relic Spheres, of course. Um, I've just gone into my inventory. We're going to combine the Ornament Base and the Sunstone. To get the Sunstone Ornament, by the way. So I did just say I was going to do that as well, didn't I? Sorry. So sorry. I'm so sorry. Zoom on the Gold Orb on the bottom right. Use the Moonstone with the slot. 
and we're going to click the puzzle there between the two pillars. Um, very easy. Now, I kind of make this a bit of a, a bit of a piss take to be honest, but the easiest way to do this is click the bottom right one twice, then the top left one twice, and then the bottom left one once, and you will get this puzzle done in no time at all. So that's the bottom right one twice, top left twice, and then the bottom left once. That is the easiest way and the quickest way to get this one done. Um, uh, other than that, I made a bit of a meal out of this one. So remember, bottom right twice, top left twice, bottom left once. Get it done. <laughs> Just sat over here making a meal out of this. Again, if you ended up messing up, you can just quit out of the main menu and just go back into it again. Anyway, pick up the golden piece or whatever that is. That just appears right there. Uh, after zooming on the area between the two pillars, the thing that just popped up. So we've got the gold inlay. Then we can go back to the druid shrine. So go back once. Use the gold inlay with the big stick thing sticking out of the ground. Then we can pick it up. Uh, to get and get the gold part now we can go back to the relic spheres or go forward zoom in on the left pillar We're almost done with this area. Oh look. It's a broken heart <laughs> uh, Use the gold part with any of the empty areas then grab the broken piece at the bottom sort of right hand corner here Add that one in and now we can zoom in on the green sphere And uh, yeah, so lots of lots of magic could do with a nap now, to be honest. Use the bracelet with the ivy. So again, down on the D-pad. And then use that. Wow. And then we can use the hammer with the frozen ivy. So bam! 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 Oh yeah! And then use the sunstone ornament with the slot. Then click it to get the seeker of nature achievement. Then we click the diadem. Diadem. Oh, diadem, man! Oh, die! Big die, you know die. Die had one of them. Uh, anyway, click the diadem to pick it up. <laughs> and we can exit all the way into the courtyard or go forward into the courtyard for another new area. Hooray! Right. Scroll 11 out of 24 in the branches in the top left corner of the screen. There it is, right there. So make sure to pick that one up. Remember that's scroll 11 uh, out of 24. So zoom in the base of the gate. Click the vines. Just move them out of the way. The old... Uh, Jeremy Vines, because nobody likes listening to that douchebag. Click, grab the valve handle, then back out. Walk up to the statue of the right-hand side of the door and use the valve handle with the slot. Uh, this is another puzzle. Again, this is going to be one of those that it's probably easier if you just skip to 10440 just to see the end product. And you can just copy exactly what I do. Or you can follow along again. Up to you completely, of course. So with yet another puzzle done, we have the court at the stable, sorry, that's open to us on the right hand side. So into the stables we go. Um, I, I am looking for Mr. Welsh, thank you. Ruggedy, good looking man. Right, a little door opens, but we're going to get this 12th scroll. It's on a wooden fence right at the forefront of the screen there, so that's scroll number 12. Then we can walk to the right of the area and solve the hidden object puzzle. After you get the hoof knife and the mansion key, the stable master achievement will unlock. So, hibbity gib. That's what horses say, right?
Yeah, you're in red. Me, I'm here to find out why monsters are kicking ass, not to do your bloody horse duties. Jesus criminy. Anyway, we get the mansion keys, pick up the artifact where the gnome, uh, at the gnome, right to where we just done the hidden object puzzle. So make sure to pick up that. That should be artifact number 12. Um, yep, the gnome where the, the man and the horse were just standing. So exit back to the courtyard, zoom into the door, and then we can use the mansion key with the keyhole, as is the norm in video games or anything in real life. Click in the door go into the mansion. Let's get artifact number 13. It's a box of tissues or something right on the table. Um, it's a small box here. <laughs> I wonder what he's doing with a big box of tissues. Uh, on the red carpet next to the stairs was scroll number 13 as well. So that should be artifact and scroll number 13 right there. So on the table and on the carpet. Right. Zoom on the armor behind the right pillar where Mr. Walsh is. And we're going to use the hoof knife with the chest to pick up the emblem part and then we can back out. Talk to the man. Uh, hello, down, Mr. Walsh. <laughs> anyway, skip that, and he's going to give us some grapes. But it's not actually grapes. It's uh, it's a grape emblem. So, But I'm hungry now. Right, to exit back to the courtyard anyway. Ah, oh, what's wrong with his face? What happened to your face, bro? You got a little... Are you like a... <gasps> Mr. Walsh is the Shadow Monster. Oh, Mr. Walsh has just been attacked and we've actually got to help him, which, yeah, that sounds about right. So, back to the courtyard, zoom on the barrel, put in the grape emblem, like he gives the grape emblem just before he got attacked by smoke, which he can just blow away, but, you yeah, whatever. Into the wine cellar on the left, and we can have a look at the bag. We're going to use the hoof knife with the bag to slice that open and then click it. Pick up the saddle decoration and the tile as well, and we're going to put that tile there in the puzzle, and then we can just back out and we'll obviously come back here a little bit later on. Pick up the right, uh, the cane on the right hand side of the gate. There it is. And then we can exit back to the courtyard and go back to the stable. Right, zoom on the saddle. Basically in the right in the middle of the screen. There it is. Pick up the saddle decoration. That should be on the top left hand corner. We got one and uh, we need the other one. There it is. So top left hand corner-ish. Then we can back out, walk up to the mural, which is on the back wall. Now that is, and now we can just pick up the red jewel. Ooh, very, very fancy. Who's leaving jewels and diamonds and crystals about, man? Jesus. Somebody's got more money than sense, the lucky bastards. Right, anyway, into the inventory. Zoom on the cane. We're going to use the red jewel on top of it. And now we can interact with it a couple of times. So that's going to give us um, the secret key, and it's also going to give us... Me secret formula. Yeah. <laughs> well, if you know, you know. So click on it a couple of times. That'll give us the sort of cane head, the secret key, and the formula. Walk up to the mural once more on the back wall. Ah, ca, 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 me formula. Use the secret key with the slot. And again, this is just one of those. Um, uh, you just got to put the gears in the right places. That's pretty much it. But again, if you just want to see the end product, just go ahead and skip to. One ten fifty five.
Right, once we have done this, we need to pick up the, what is called the uh, ornate bridle. Yeah. So pick that one up, exit back to the courtyard, nip back to the mansion, zoom in on the horse statue on the left, and then we're going to use the ornate bridle and both saddle decorations with the slots. It's all, it's all coming together. I love it when a plan comes together. That saddle decoration that'll be then. But if you could do it on where the actual saddle sits, that would be fantastic as well. Uh, right, so do that. And the ordle bridle. Yeah, there we go. So that's what that should look like. Then we can pick up the family crest, the next emblem. Now we can go back to the courtyard. Then go back to the wine cellar. And we're going to use the family crest with the grate. And that opens that up. Now we can get an artifact and a scroll. The scroll is directly in the stairs, right in the middle, right there. And then the red circle in the middle of the curtain, sort of around this particular area. There it is. Kind of a red circle, just on the curtain there. So that should be artifact and scroll number 14 each. So zoom in the area behind the curtain. We're going to pick up the label and we're going to pick up the rake. Back out of there. Yeah, we're all good for now. Walk up to the small balcony at the sort of, uh, the sort of back wall. And we're going to do yet another, uh, sorry, close enough, close to the back wall is what I meant. Do another hidden object puzzle, get the compass pad. Compass. Who's eating an apple and putting it back, you dirty baggers? And when we finally find the wine thief, which is whatever the hell the wine thief is, big tall thing, that will give us the next compass park. Right now we can exit back to the courtyard, go back to the mansion and walk up to the globe on the right hand side. We're going to use the compass park with a slot and now we're going to press a few buttons in order. So from left to right is one to six. So we're going to press the very right one, which is number six first. The very left one, which is number one. And then number five. And that's the easiest and quickest way to do that particular puzzle. Otherwise, you'll be going back and forth and it's a bit of a pain in the ass. Uh, so pick up the wine bottle and embellishment. Um, obviously, if you do take a long time on that puzzle, you can just completely quit out of the main menu, come back, and you'll just go to that point. Um, walk up to the bookshelves there at the back. Use the embellishment with the slot. And then what you need to do is very easy. Just click each segment until the border colour matches the colour and position that is shown on the embellishment. So... Top left hand corner, red, purple, yellow, etc. So just copy exactly the same colours. Job's done. And then when that one is done, we're going to pick up the wine bottle and the camera case. Damn, that must be a hell of a good bottle of wine. If somebody's locking it in that particular in a particular puzzle like that, so back to the courtyard, we're going to use the rake with the this thing hanging from a tree, a hook, and whatever it is. So use the rake with hangy thingy tree thingy. We get the latch hook. That's what the thingy is. So <laughs> now we can go into our inventory. Inventorious. Use the uh, zoom in on the camera case. There she blows, and we're going to keep clicking it until we get the camera. The flash powder and a reflector. So that should be three items in there that should get. Now we can go back to the stable there on the right hand side. We're going to zoom in on the car. Great car. That would sell for probably mega bucks by now I reckon. Uh, pick up the label which is in the grill. And we're going to use the um, latch hook with the slot. That's not a slot. 
uh, <laughs> there's a slot on the left there, so use the latch hook with it. Pick up the screwdriver and then back out. Make your engine ain't going to work if there's going to be a screwdriver in it. Just letting you know. Zoom in on the fish pond there on the right hand side. Use the rake with the water. And that is going to get us a boot. Literally could have just, you know, grabbed it with your hand. But again, there we go. Keep clicking the boot and we're going to pick up a round emblem and a statue fragment. Before we can exit back to the courtyard. And back to the wine cellar on the left. Oh, smashing. Smashing cheeks. Right, in inventory. <laughs> smashing. I meant to say smashing chaps. Zoom on the camera. Click to open it. And we're going to use the screwdriver with it, and then we can pick up the lens. Oh, there's a method to our madness. And then, once again, what we can do in the inventory, combine the formula and the lens. So go to the Krabby Patty secret formula. Me formula! There it is, and then use the lens on that. <clears throat> oh, one tablespoon of love. Three tablespoons of marriage. Four tablespoons of a baby carriage. That's not the secret formula. I'm so sorry. So, that basically gets us a recipe. Now we can click on the zoom. Uh, on Zoom on the bag on the barrel on the left. Use the round emblem with the tube on the right, just next to the bag. Go ahead, use that round emblem. That's going to pop out open lovely. Uh, pick up the statue fragment and the label. And then we can back out. It is in there. There is a label in there. There, ah, she blows once more. Now, back out of here, uh, what we're going to do is zoom on the top right of the gate. Uh, so, kind of like this little wine cellary section -y bitty. Of course, we are in a wine cellar. That makes sense. Uh, click on the wine bottle there, the singular, singular wine bottle, then back out. Now, we can walk up to the back wall. Now, we're going to do this little puzzle. So, we're going to use the all the labels with the slots. So, chuck them slots in. And now what you have to do, we've got to use the recipe with the shelf. Basically, if you follow the recipe, you've just got to do it, um, do each particular wine bottle in a particular order. So it's, it's, I'll just tell you what to do anyway. So use the recipe with the shelf and the wine bottle with the empty spots. So you've got these three wine bottles, green, red, and blue. You've got, um, basically where the numbers are, four, three, and one. We just have to basically make it so... Um, it's basically like an adding game. So you've got five here. So I'll just show you in here. So pick up the green bottle and put it into five. Then put five into three. It's just saves me explaining it. I'll just tell you what to do. It's easier because I'm just getting lost to myself. Put three in the drain, which is in the middle. And then put five to three again. Pick up the green wine bottle. Put that into number five. Put five into three. And then put five into 1974. So as you can see, there is four right there. And that basically does that one. So now with the red bottle, we need to get it. So it basically adds up to three, which is again is very easy. Put the red, which is the middle wine bottle, to three. And then just three to 1936. That one was very easy. And now we need to get just one one singular drop. So pick up the very right bottle, which is the blue one. Put it to five. <clears throat> and then grab five and put it to three. Put three into the drain. There's a lot of wine being wasted. Oh, wine connoisseurs are fuming. Put five to three. Put the blue wine bottle, the very right-hand side one, to five. Then put five to three. Put three to drain. Five to three. And then put five to 1990. And that is how you do that puzzle. It's it's a decent one. Um, one I enjoyed doing thoroughly because it's not one of those, you know, random stupid ones that, that piss you off eventually. So anyway, into the secret room. We got another shadow monster from Lost. He just doesn't know when to give up, does he? We're going to zoom on the desk on the left-hand side. We're going to pick up the bobby pin, which is at the back there, and the broken Cherez statue. Cherez? Ah, uh, Ceres? Ceres? Man, I just completely monged that one up, didn't I? Click on the pictures anyway until we're able to pick up the tile, and then we can back out. We're going to zoom on the piano there on the right-hand side. We're going to pick up the Bacchus statue, or Bacchus. 
Bacchus, whatever, the statue, then we're backing out. Click on the covered, uh, sort of, it kind of looks like a big cupboard or wardrobe or something on the right-hand side. Um, so click on this bloody wardrobe thing. Um, to uncover it, zoom on it, and we're going to pick up the tile, and then we can back out. So now we should have two out of two tiles. We're going to go back to the courtyard and into the stable. We're going to zoom on the saddle again. We're going to use the bobby pin with the stirrup, which is where you put your feet, you know, until the horse somehow gets pissed off and just smashes you off anyway, and then just breaks your legs off. So, eh, all good. Right, we pick up the stirrup, we back out, we go back to the wine cellar now. So I exit back to the courtyard, back to the wine cellar. Zoom on the top right of the gate again, where all the wine bottles are. And we're going to use the stirrup with the um, slot. It's the only slot that's there. Then we can pick up another statue fragment. Who's hiding this crap, man? So in the inventory, what we're going to do is combine the broken Keres and statue fragments. The broken Ceres? Bacchus? Yeah. And we basically just need to put him together. Him, her... I don't know. If it's these days, you can, you know, he's pretty much a frying pan. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> but put put Keres, whatever the bloody thing's name is, put it back together. Zoom on the area behind the curtain. We're going to use both the statues that we've got with the slots right here. And that's going to open up and we can pick up a flash and a wrench. Interesting. In the inventory, we need to go back into our inventory. We're going to zoom on the big flash. The only thing that we can click on is the flash. We're going to add reflector, and we're going to add the flash powder. This is someone who has magic, but apparently we need an old-timey camera to get past the shadow monster. It all makes perfect sense. So, <laughs> again, add the reflector, then the flash powder. Then we can zoom back on the bag, which is on the barrel on the left-hand side. We're going to use the tiles that we have with the slots. And we can finally pick up the fountain plaque. Hooray! So, go forward into the secret room on the left. And we're going to use the flash with the smoke monster. And now, Lost will finally have its proper ending where everyone gets to go home and nobody was actually lost for many years instead of being dead or whatever whatever the, the ending was. Sorry. So, you should get the Beast Buster achievement there. Now, we're going to walk up to this back wall. We're going to pick the clover. And then we're going to back out. We'll come back to that puzzle in just a minute. Exit twice back to the courtyard, then go back to the stable. Again, man, dude, you're Sarah's bloody knacker right here, mate. Zoom on the car, and we're going to use the wrench with the hood ornament. Ah, then how do you know it's a Honda? That's the whole point of having it. But sorry, Super Nintendo Charmers, Simpsons. Yeah, just another Simpsons quote, sorry. So we've got the uh, hood ornament, picked it up. Zoom back on the saddle, and we're going to use the clover with the slot this time. So we're going to click on that, and then... Um, we've picked up the musical clue, so back to the mansion now. And we can talk to Mr. Walsh, who finally has no black smoke again, even though we could probably just blow him away, or get a fan at least, a couple of fans. Apparently that didn't occur to Mr. Walsh there. Too much wine. Anyway, he gives us a crystal torch, which we can pick up, and now we can zoom on the armour again behind the right side pillar. Use the crystal torch with the hand. And now we can pick up the water emblem. Wow, it's all it's all just kicking. That was dusty. <laughs> Jesus Christ, buddy. The one you got black smoke monsters. Jesus, mate. You dirty bastard. Anyway, exit back to the courtyard, down to the wine cellar, and then into the secret room. Zoom on the big wardrobe on the right-hand side. Use the hood ornament that we picked up with the slot. And we can pick up another griffin statue. A lot of picking and... A lot of still not being rich, which is annoying. Zoom on the piano. Use the musical clue with the sheet. And then we can just back out. We're going to zoom on the desk. And um, we're going to pick up the dragon statue. There it is. So a little compartment opens up. Welsh dragon. So pick up the dragon statue. Exit back twice to go to the courtyard. Zoom in on the fountain. It's a big fountain that's directly in front of us. You, you should probably know what a fountain is. We're going to use the fountain plaque with the slot. We're going to use the two statues from our inventory, which we should have. And then we're going to use... Um, so, yeah, use the uh, griffin and the dragon statue. Obviously, they've got to be in a specific place. Then just use the water emblem with the new slot. Oh, it's all, all coming into place now, isn't it? Finally. Pick up the triangle, 
go back to the wine cellar and go back to the secret room. We are going to do that puzzle now. Um, now, there was going to be a way that I was going to do this very much nice and easy as we put the triangle in, but it's the, the bottom right-hand corner got a bit messed up for me. So anyway, on the first row, which is the very top row, we're going to swap triangles 8 and 9. So each row basically has tr uh, 9 triangles. So there's 1, 2, and 3 rows at the very top. So at the top, just count them and then go to 8 and 9 and swap those two around. On row 2, what you need to do is swap the second and third triangle around. So again, from the very left, just count where the second one is and then use it with the third one there. Um, swap on row 2, swap the 6th and 7th one, like that one, and then on row 3, what you need to do is swap triangles 1 and 2, and then for some reason, um, the the bottom right hand corners get a bit squiffy and a bit messed up here, so I, I accidentally messed this one up a little bit, so if you just want to skip forward like 10-20 seconds to see the, the ending, or just <laughs> follow along with what I do, uh, so again, apologies for messing that little bit up there, but as soon as we've done this one, it's, it should be fairly easy. You just need to get the dragon's head, put it on the bottom, and put the sort of Celtic design on the bottom there. It should be easy enough. But again, making a bit of a meal out of that one. Sounds about right. <laughs> oh, right, so finally, after that's done, get your magical bracelet layout by pressing down on the D-pad, and then... Um, we can now walk up to it. It's another puzzle, one where you've just got to place particular items, whichever one makes sense. So just go to 128.30 to see the final finished product, and that'll just be easier. Or again, if you want to follow along, be my guest, chicken breast. And there she blows, so that will get you yet another achievement, the Protector of the Order. Protector of the Order, it's a new Star Wars film, sounds like. Anyway, make sure to pick up the shield, and then after this little cutscene's going to happen, we're going to exit twice back to the courtyard. And, uh, well, that's basically going to be it for this bit. So now we're going to be at a completely new section, living the dream, loving life. And here we blow then. So, new area means new collectibles. So, we're going to grab the 15th artifact right here, just to the top of the left side stairs. And that's going to be some small snakes. So, make sure to grab that. That should be 15th artifact. We're going to zoom on those small pile of rocks. And we're going to keep smashing that open until we pick up a blue prism. They're trying to build a prism for you and me to live in. Uh, zoom on the shovel there on the right. Sorry, system for down now. Zo pick up the bent metal. There's only one thing we can pick up for now, the bent metal. Then we're going to back out and exit left towards the beacon. Another couple of uh, collectibles. Small dragon, which is going to be on the right side chain and flags. That's going to be artifact number 16. Should appear right here somewhere. Uh, there it is. Kind of hard to tell that one, but that is a small dragon. So that's 16th artifact. And just above the blue part of the ground here is the 15th scroll. So again, that should be 16 artifact and 15th scroll. Now we can pick up the pole. I don't know where, again, where we're shoving that. Sarah must have a lot of good hiding places. Back to the crossroads, then right to the tree of ancestors. So from here, there's a 16th scroll, which is just uh, straight in front of us in the middle of the screen uh, against the green lock underneath the lantern. Zoom on the box on the right-hand side. We're going to pick up the rope and we're going to back out. I don't know what we're going to do. We're going to mow scissor like ourselves. No, oh, no. Uh, in the inventory, zoom on the pole and then add the bent metal and the rope. Wow, how incredible is that? Engineering at its finest. So we've got a hooked pole. What we need to do is use that hooked pole with the lantern at the top. And then 
after this bit, we can just walk up to the tree. You know, there's only one tree in here, so make sure to walk up to it. It's going to be another hidden object puzzle anyway, so after this, we're going to get the red pressure system. So there we go then, we've got our red prism system for you and me to live in. Right, after that we can go back to the crossroads and go left to the beacon again. We're going to zoom on the statue, um, which is the big statue in the middle of us right there. We're going to pick up the lantern emblem and we can just back out, walk up to the beacon there on the right. We're going to pick up a broken prism. Uh, we're going to come up to another puzzle, but again, we can just skip and you can just see exactly where it's placed. Pick up the broken prism, go into your inventory, zoom in on your lantern, and we're going to use the lantern emblem with the slot. So the lantern emblem, use that with the slot, pick up the glass panes and the candle, and then go back into your inventory again. Sarah, man, did this chick cool? Zoom in on the broken prism, use the glass panes and both prisms with it. There it is, so red and blue. Blue and red makes brownie poop. Um, and that's it, now we can just use that fixed prism with the beacon. And once again, it's another puzzle where we, it's basically we just have to move mirrors in order to get the blue light, the yellow light and the red light shining. But again, it's probably going to be a lot easier if you just skip to... 13440. Noisy slicey does it now. Right, when that boy is shining, we're going to use the candle with the beacon. And you know what that's going to get? It's going to get us a lit candle, wouldn't you know? Yeah, wouldn't you know? So, use the candle there. It's going to light up for us. Lovely job. Now we can exit back to the crossroads. Eventually. And then we can go right to the Tree of Ancestors. Click on the tree. And we're going to get a, the Ghost Whisper, Ghost Whisperer achievement after we unlock that. And that is for speaking to a dead dude. Now you've really lost the plot. Uh, so right, click on the tree again. And remember these nuts we got earlier? Well, this time we're going to get these magic nuts. <laughs> oh, yeah. Who wants some of these magic nuts in your face? Anyway, go back. Zoom on the anvil on the right-hand side. We're going to pick up the metal hook. On the anvil. Um, we're going to grab the hammer. Ha ah, ha. We're going to grab the hammer and crush these magic nuts. Ouch. 
Oh, very much ouch. Pick up the crushed nuts anyway. And, um, yeah, man. Pick up the, it kind of looks like a ladle, like a spoon ladle thing. And then we can just back out. Sorry, I'm still winching it. Hammer on nuts. It hurts. Well, I suppose pregnancy and stuff hurts worse. So, you know, we're kind of even there, aren't we? Right, go back into the beacon. Zoom back in on the beacon. As you can see, the layout's changed. We're going to pick up the disc. We're going to back out. And then we're going to zoom on the nest where the statue used to be. Use those crushed nuts which once held you with such pride. These nuts are all gone, but we do have a sword and a hexagon frame in its place. So, you know, no nuts for a sword. I'll take that. Go back to the Tree of Ancestors, zoom on the box on the right, pick up the disc from the top left corner and back out again. Zoom on the statue, just to the left right there. Use the metal hook with the disc. No, not the frame with the disc, donkey butt. Use the metal hook, because uh, that's the only way you can get stuff. You can't do it with another frame. Dude. Okay, get the disc anyway. Right, now we can pick up the runic trapezoid and exit back to the crossroads walk to the billboard here in the middle and use all the discs with the slots now it's kind of hard to describe this one so again just follow exactly the ones i the, the, the exactly the ones i pick and again it should make uh, it should be absolutely fine but you've got to do it in a particular order so follow along with this bit you're literally just clicking on each one once in a particular order Right, this bit's easy. You've literally just got to press um, the big skull thing once each time. That's going to reveal a crystal. There we go. Just pop that on the sword. And then this bit. Now, there's no real, you know, right or wrong way to do this. All you need to do is get the red uh, emblems or the red symbols on the left side of the screen and the purple symbols on the right side of the screen. So, again, there's no real fast or you know particular way to do this you just got to keep messing about with it until reds on the left purples on the right See, bruh, we get there eventually. So what that gi does give us is the dragon shield. So, tidy job. What we're going to do now is exit to the tree of ancestors on the right. We're going to walk up to the top of the stairs. There it is. A cu couple of steps, we'll call it, rather than stairs. But we're going to use the shield. We're going to use the sword. So, yep, yeah, use the shield first. You've got to do this in order again. Use the griffin sword. And then we can use the picture. Uh, sorry, with picture. Um, <laughs> now, rotate each ring. Now, this isn't one of those where two moves the third one or anything like that. They move basically independently, so one at a time. So, all you, the best thing to do, put the yellow gem at the very top, and then just align the sort of last two um, as you go. Very simple enough, this one. But just make sure that the yellow gem's at the top, just so you've got, uh, just so you know... Sort of exactly what it looks like, and it should be easy enough then to align the other two. I say should be, I'm making a, a pig's ear out of that one again. And then what that does is open up a little doorway for us. And we're off to Luxan's Grave. 
delish. Right, another artifact to pick up. It's a griffin that is just to the left of the tomb in a tiny small bush. So, you see a bush? There's going to be a griffin in it. There he is. So make sure to pick up that one. That should be 17 out of 25 for the artifacts. Right, pick up the laurel, which is on the grave. Zoom on the statue. Uh, oh, sorry, no. Um, click both torches first, sorry. That's how you get a statue coming up. Uh, so click both on the torches there at the forefront of the screen. Then zoom on the statue at the back. Pick up the diadem bat. It's not in my house, it's a Bill's house and a diadem. Uh, and then we can back out, <laughs> exit once again to the crossroads. And then we can zoom in on the statue, left side uh, of the screen there, statue. Use the diadem butt uh, with head. <laughs> oh, diadem on his head, man. And we can pick up the shooting star and the runic trapezoid. Lovely jobs. So that should be a second uh, runic trapezoid. And we can go back to the right, to the tree of ancestry minios. Zoom on the box. Bottom right hand corner, use the shooting star with the slot, and we can pick up the laurel and a blacksmith figurine. There we go, lovely. Still, who's hiding this? Must be some genius man with not a lot of time in his hands. Uh, or a lot of time in his hands even. Right, we're going back to the beacon, so let's head back there. Zoom in on the beacon once more, on the floor. Use the laurels with the beacon. Jeweled laurels, yeah, they're not even... They're not even fake laurels, they're not even real, they're just jeweled. God damn. Right. Oh my god, it's my favourite. What we can do now is pick up these golden nuggets. Who's got those golden balls? You got those golden balls. But we do now have some golden nuggies. So we can go back to the crossroads. We're going to interact with the anvil on the right hand side again. And a couple of things to do here. So use the blacksmith figurine with the blacksmith figurine slot. Should be uh, fairly obvious which one that was. Pick up the players, then we're going to back out. In the inventory, we're going to combine our little golden nuggies, not with a bowl of milk, uh, but with the crucible it's called, like the spoon ladle thing. But in blacksmith term, it's called a crucible, I, I assume. So that's going to melt the gold. Again, you think we could we take just a little piece home for us to at least get a couple of grand, but... Apparently not. So in the inventory, zoom on the hexagonal frame. We're going to use the pliers with the frame here. And then we can add the runic trapezoids. So again, you should have those two. So pop them in. And that gets us Luxon's ornament. Now we're going to go back to the Tree of Ancestors. Back to the left over on Luxon's grave. We're going to zoom in on the statue once again. You know, the thing at the back. That's the boy. Use Luxan's ornament with the slot. And walk up to the tomb. It's another hidden object seen. But after this one, we're going to get a cheeky little key mold. You, you could have just... I mean, it would, I could think of easier ways to get a key mold personally. But hey, there we go. I suppose there she blows then. So that's well, that's what we've got. We've got the key mold. Now we can just go ahead and exit back twice <laughs> to the crossroads. Zoom in on the right-hand side anvil once more. And now we're going to finish this bit. So use the key mold with the other key mold to make a full key mold. Use the crucible with the key mold to make a golden key. Crucible gold mold. Grab the water, use it on the key mold, and then click the mold. And then do as you're told, and then do some fold, and then you've got a mole on your butt. Anyway, after the cutscene, we've got the... <laughs> yeah, my rhymes are not fantastic. Well, we get the relic key, so at the Tree of Ancestors, zoom back in on the box. Use the lit candle here with the dark area. 
and were able to pick up a file. Again, you could have just had a stuck your hand in and had a look, but anyway. Zoom in on the left top of stairs and to pick up the torch seal. And then we can use the file with Thanos' other gauntlet. Yes, in this reality, he had two gauntlets. Ah, scurry. Nah, this is um, Edward Scissorhand stuff. Uh, pick it up anyway, exit back to the crossroads, go back to the beacon, zoom in on the statue in the middle. And now we can use the gauntlet there with the vine, so we can Edward Scissorhands our way through this. By the way, screw Amber Heard. Um, <laughs> don't, you don't diss our Johnny like that. Right, so anyway, now we've done that, we've picked up the ancient coin, back to the crossroads, zoom in on the billboard again, use the gauntlet with the vines once more, and now we can use the relic key with the slot. Wow, see, it's, it's, all, it's all madness to my method. So, uh, no puzzle here, we're just going to pick up the dragon seal, man, dragon looks angry. We're going to zoom on the shovel, which of course is on the right, oh, bit of... Uh, <laughs> Spicy curry Indian food there, just uh, shaking the <laughs> shaking the screen in my ass. Uh, put the ancient coin in anyway, and then we can pick up these uh, couple of jewels or these gems, whatever. Right, back out of here, we're going to go back to the Tree of Ancestors. You're going to use the gems with the slots um, on the gravestone on the left-hand side. So again, you have to put them in... <laughs> <laughs> I love it about the game sometimes. Sometimes it automatically does it for you. Other times it's like, nah, just, you, you've been lazy for a bit now. Do it yourself for a little bit. Cheers, mate. Tidy. Right, pick up the Griffin Seal. Go back to Crossroads. And we're going to go back to the Beacon again. We're almost done with this section now. So, zoom on the statue. Use all the three seals with the slots. And again, you have to do it in... Uh, you have to put each particular one in each particular one. That that did make sense in my mind. And with that, we can now press down on the D-pad, use the bracelet with the red cloud, and once again, click on the puzzle that appears. It is it is a simple one, but it, it does kind of look, you know, kind of complicated. But we're just placing stuff, really. So again, just go ahead and skip to 148.55 in order to see the finished product. And that's the end of that chapter. So, we'll get the Great Inspector achievement as well. And now we can click on the cloak to pick it up. The cloak is in the middle of the screen right there, the middle of the way. There we go. So, pick that one up. And we can finally get out of here. We're going back to the Fertility Facility Basement. Hooray! Man, you wouldn't believe the crap I've seen right now. Right, so there's going to be the 17th scroll, which is on the rubble, just in front of the centre pillar there. So before moving on, make sure to pick that one up. Scroll 17, that should be. Zoom on the crate on the right-hand side. We're going to pick up the metal pole and simply back out of it. Pick up the puzzle cube on the left, uh, just near these orange, very, very magically mushrooms. Use the metal pole with the caved-in area and we can exit to the facility. Back to the old fertility. Right, we're going to get another artifact and scroll. So the artifact, the 18th artifact, is like, kind of looks like a manhole cover. It's on this walkway on the left-hand side. There it is. That, so that should be 18, the 18th artifact. And the 18th scroll will be on the ground between the left pillar and the junk. So basically right in the middle of the screen, right there. Scroll number 18. So zoom on the junk on the right. And we can pick up the blank badge. We're going to click at the boards until we pick up some rubber. <laughs> some more rubber gloves. And then back out again. Zoom on the left pillar. And use the rubber gloves with the purple goo. That's what Mike was good at as well. Um, get the electrical tape and then back out. Uh, <laughs> I'm just joking. So sorry. Zoom um, on the back right control panel right there where the ID card goes. Just pick up the flashlight. And we're going to go back out of here and exit left to the generator. 
There's going to be another scroll here. It's basically right on the middle tube. Very easy to miss. But you see the three tubes on the right hand side? Yes, that's where the scroll is, right in the middle one. So that should be 19 out of 24. Now we can just zoom in on the broken computer. So pick up the light bulb and the little, little toy owl. Then we can back out. In our inventory, we're going to combine said light bulb and said flashlight. So, said, right said Fred, go ahead and do it. Zoom on the venting, which is next to the open crate. It's on the floor, rather than looking up at the ceiling, which I went to. Uh, so there's the venting. Use the metal pole. Of course, on the venting. Then use the flashlight. And uh, so we can actually see what the hell we're doing there. What are we doing now? Right, uh, use the rubber gloves. Obviously, you need to be popping them on. There we go. So don't electroconocute yourself. Use the electrical tape with those wires as well. What a job. I tell you what, I, I could be an easy engineer. Right? Look at that. That job is unbelievable. Like bloody brand new, mate. Right, pick up the folded paper anyway. <laughs> and now we can go into our inventory. We're going to zoom in on said folded paper. And we're going to click until we get the paper clip and password. Now we need to zoom on the steel lockers, which is in the back area. So just above where the computer is right there, that is where the steel lockers are. Oh, it's McGaggy's. We're going to use the paper clip with the lock. Oh, what's McGaggy hiding? A birthday cake with the letter McGaggy on it. Pick up the oak wood block and the badge printer, and we can just back out. So that's the block, and we should have had the big, massive printer-looking printer. Zoom on the computer. We're going to use the badge printer with the table. Of course, and then, of course, we need to click on the cable right next to it in order for it to work, to go. Use the blank, blank badge with the badge printer. Jesus Christ, this is like the hokey cokey, isn't it? Use the blank badge with the badge printer. Use the password with the computer. Then type it in. What is it, bro? 03842. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Whoa! Click the print button. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Whoa! Then pick up the badge. Then we can exit back to the fertility facility. Ho oh, oh. ho! See, I could be. I'm a nursery rhymer now. I want the money. Right, zoom in on the access panel on the right hand side. Use the access badge with the card reader. And we've got a new area the reliquary. 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 Whatever. Whatever it is, that's where we're going, to the right. So, another artifact and scroll here. The artifact is a bust which is on the ground, just to the right of the weird-looking unicorn baby animal cage thing. There it is, so make sure to pick that up. And the scroll is on the side of the big desk, just left of the pillar. So it's right on the big desk, so there it is, you can see that. So that should be artifact 19 and scroll number 20. Zoom in on the green crate. And then we can just pick up the random block that's just chilling there for some particular reason. Back that out, and we can zoom in on the big desk this time. Pick up the block and the chisel. And back into your inventory again. We're going to zoom in on the puzzle box we got from the orange magic mushrooms earlier. And we can add all the three blocks to it. So, and again, you have to do the particular one. So, oak wood, beech wood, your mum wood, whichever wood. Morning wood. Yeah, anyway. As long as all three blocks are in, then we can back out and go back to the fertility facility basement. Zoom in on the crate again on the right-hand side. Use the chisel with the crate to get a couple of nails. Something tells me you literally could have just kicked that through and that would have had the same consequence. But obviously this chick's got nice shoes on or something. I don't know. So we've got nails. Pick up the gun barrel from the um, crate as well. Now, uh, in... Sorry, go into your inventory, combine the puzzle box with the nails to put in the morning wood. <laughs> now, uh, now we've just got to click whatever's in the box and grab the dragon ornament. Sorry, my English is getting a bit dumber as I go through the day. Uh, right, back to the facility. And then to the right into the weckl reliquary. Reliquary? Reliquary? Yeah. For some reason, I forgot where it was, but it's on the right-hand side. Right. Zoom in on the back wall. All right, there we go, on the right. Now we can use the dragon ornament with the slot. And we're going to walk up to this back wall. And what we're going to do is solve another hidden object scene. 
And then this will be the last one of the main game. So as long as you haven't used a hint, you should get two achievements, Eagle Eye and Master of Examination. So there we go, no more hidden object puzzles, not for the main game at least, anyway, now we don't have to worry about any more achievements. So, uh, after we get that, we've got Luxon's crown, now we can go back to the facility and to the left in the generator. We're going to walk up to the mural on the wall, there we go, so no hints, that should be good for us. Walk up to the mural, use Luxon's crown with the slot. Now, this is one of those annoying ones where you have to put um, all the colours in a particular order, but I'm going to tell you exactly the, the best way to do it. So, go over to the right one. You've obviously got the left one, the middle big one, and the sort of medium right one. So, what you need to do, over on the right, press the right trigger, the right trigger only, and press it nine times on this right-hand side set of jewels. So, right trigger to go to the right, press it nine times... There we go. Now into the middle, press the right trigger five times. Over to the left, press it twice. Again, always right trigger, press it twice. Back into the middle, press it six times. Right trigger six times there. Go over to the right, press the right trigger six times again. And finally, go over to the left, press it once. And that is the way you do that then. So hopefully I just explained that one well enough for you that you just uh, followed along very nice and easily. Um, and you didn't make too many mistakes. Again, completely quit out. Go back into it if it's taking too long or whatever. Right, in this meter generator, there is this 22nd, 21st scroll and 20th artifact right in the middle of the screen, right next to each other there. So make sure you pick those two up. There's a little animal skeleton and the scroll as well. So artifact 20, scroll 21. Right, on the gargoyle, Use the chisel with the bone, pick it up, and back out twice to the facility, and then go to the right into the re reliquary. Reliquary? I'm so, I don't know. Zoom in on the weird unicorn baby, whatever the hell that's supposed to be, tank. Use the hanging owl on the glass. Use the bone with the animal. It's mad, all animals just love a good bone. Yeah, that's why they're animals. Uh, pick up the heavy stone. <laughs> Fair dues to you. And the uh, valve handle and the gemstone. So you should have three items there, plus one out of two gemstones. Go back to the generator. Zoom in on the open locker, Magagi's open locker. And use the heavy stone with the rotted area. Ooh, what, what surprise it? Oh, she's got a bag of white powder. What's that about? Uh, pick up the poison and the white, suspicious white powder, which of course you would hide from, uh, you know, if you're in a particular location working like this go back to the re reliquary zoom in on the left wall this time use the acid with the lock sorry it's not poison it's acid close enough use the acid with the lock to obviously get rid of that we're just going to take a look in this little white bag what do we have here oh it's plaster powder oh never mind you got all excited for nothing right pick up the battle horn go back to the facility zoom on the junk once again on the right hand side where the bright pillar used to be now use the valve handle on the tap to the left. Use the plaster powder, which got a lot of people excited, but it is just plaster powder. And that gets us some quick set plaster. Some quick, <laughs> some quick set. Suspicious white powder in a bag. Exit to the generator. Go to the meteor crater. Meteor crater. We're going to use the battle horn with anywhere. So it's in the middle of the screen. That's fine. <laughs> That's my battle horn. It's pretty sad. 
Uh, in the inventory, uh, pick up the pieces on the gar for, of the gargoyle from the right there. Now to go into your inventory, we're going to combine the broken gargoyle and the quick set plaster. The suspicious white powder, which turns out it wasn't that suspicious. So why is she hiding it? Maybe she was sniffing some plaster. I don't know. It's up, it's up to random people, whatever they want to do. Uh, it is the TikTok phase, isn't it? People are stupid, so yeah. Anyway, put the gargoyle <laughs> back together. Not everyone's stupid on TikTok. Don't get your niggas in a twist. Don't get your pubes in a bunch. Um, right, zoom on the back left rock. Click on the small rock and pick up the gemstones. That should be two out of two gemstones. Now in the inventory, we can combine the gemstones with the broken gargoyle statue. Put him in his eyes. Stick him in. Zoom on the back left rock again. And we can use the gargoyle once again with the slot. Pick up the skull, which appears. Come in. There it is. And now we can go back again to the facility. Back again to the facility. And to the right to the reliquary. Reliquary. Right, zoom on the green crate once more. The one on the left, there it is. Use the skull with the rope. Arr. Pick up the laser gun. Oh, interesting. Chilling. You could have just used a knife on that. You didn't need to go through all that to grab that. Anyway, in the inventory, combine the laser gun and the gun barrel. And then pick up the battery. Um, which, of course, is a battery-looking thing with the lightning bolt on it. God knows where I was going. But pick up the battery and then we can back out and go to the facility. Now, we've got a little, kind of like a boss battle, but you just got to pick pick the exact same ones that I do. Very easy. Hopefully, again, the pace is slow enough that you can just follow nice and easy. I mean, I hope that was nice and easy. Well, anyway, once we're done anyway, zoom on the left pillar. Use the chisel with the bolts. Don't go bolting, my friend, yeah. Use the uh, dead battery there with the slot. Apparently, purple powder makes it overpowered. I'll take that. Now we can exit to the generator into the meteor crate. We're basically almost done with the main game now. It's just a bonus game we've got to do then. So into the meteor crater. In the inventory, combine your laser gun with your battery, of course, because that's how you... That's the only way you can destroy a big rock skull with chains coming out of his head. Good. It's a good look. It is a good look. Use the charge battery. Use the laser gun with the bucket hanging to the right of the meteor. And then when he appears... Ah! Scurry stuff, bruh. Interact with him. And again, we've just got a couple of puzzles to do. So, again... Hopefully I go slow enough, but just follow along with exactly what I do to end this stuff. And there she blows then, me darlings. That is the end of this main game. So you should get two achievements there for finishing all the mini games without skipping. And uh, the other one there, the Liberator. And that is just for uh, basically completing the main game. But we do have the main menu, the bonus... Not oh, the main menu. We have to do the bonus episode because, of course, that is where the rest of the achievements are. Or the rest of the collectibles. So... 
we're going to get three story progression ones uh, achievements. So three story based achievements to do, and the rest of the uh, the collectibles to grab as well. So it's not like you can just grab the collectibles and finish. Nope, you've actually got to finish the complete game. So, into the bonus mode we go then. Where are we at? 205, we've got about 25 minutes, roughly, something like that to do. So, first things to do, we've got the artifact, the 21st one, which is the stalactite, just above Magagi's head. It's going to appear somewhere. Uh, just between the two statues, it's going to appear right about yeah, There it is. So make sure to grab that one. That should be your 21st out of 25. Right. So from left to right is going to be statue 1 and statue 6. What we're going to do is grab the sword. Put that over to number 6. The shield uh, is going to be number 4. The um, cloak, that will be statue number 3. So give him that one. The ring, that will be number 1. Somewhere, there it is. Stick his finger square inside that ring. This is a whole host of nothing, I believe. Or is it? Uh, no, no, it is a whole host of nothing. So, I, ignore that. You're not supposed to be using this one. <laughs> right, okay. So, from the box, grab the necklace. Put that over to the fifth statue. And then the die, and then the die Adam, but... Put it over to the second statue. That's going to get this statue. Now we can grab the bracelet. Use it with the new statue. And then we can click on Smoke Monster. Kind of looks like a real cheap-ass crappy Aladdin or something. The genie from Aladdin. Not a good one. Right, so now we can pick up the supply bag. We're going to go into our inventory. Zoom on said supply bag. And we're going to keep clicking until we get the fireplace tongs, the cord, the paintbrush, and the pick. Alright, pick me up a good one. Now we can go to the Runeward Circle, which will get us the Voyager achievement. Abigish, we are frying! You must have restored the energy source in each of the four elemental chambers of the Rune World. Thank you, um, cheap genie. Right, interact with the small light post just above the D-pad hub right there. A uh, HUD, sorry. Pick up the water orb and then we can just back out. There's, again, a lot of back and forth in between these four uh, four rooms, to be honest. Zoom on the red portal, which is the third one, to pick up the wooden handle, and then back out. And then we connect it to the yellow portal, which is on the very left-hand side, called the Chamber of Earth. Basically, in the next four Harry Potter books, except probably not, because J.K. Rowling's a bit of a... Uh, anyway. 22nd artifact right there, just to, the ne just to the left of that rock pile right there, so that's 22, and then the... Next scroll is over to the right, just underneath the rock. So make sure you've got 22 artifacts and 22 scrolls. Click on the snake statue over on the right, and make sure to pick up the crystal shard. Again, where's my money? Pick up the cracked lens as well, and then click on the buried block to raise it, which is on the right-hand side right there, so raise that one. And now we can just back out. Lovely. Zoom on the stone at the top of the stairs on the left-hand side. Pick up the crystal shard. And back yourself out of it. So go into your inventory. Zoom in on the water orb. And now click the water orb to open it up. And then add them crystal shards. Man, I tell you, I wish I could find a place like this. A bit of gold in your pocket, a bit of crystal. I would be rich. Uh, but since that is sadly not going to happen, we're just going to exit back to the room world circle. Go to the blue portal, which is on the very right-hand side. Use the paintbrush with the spider web. Again, you probably could have just used your finger or blew it away, whatever, but... There we go. I'm not an expert, obviously. We're going to use the water orb with the slot. And that will open up the next in the Harry Potter installment. The Chamber of Water. Right, 23rd out of 25 artifact. Just to the left, underneath the, like, tree roots on the left. So you've got the big tree, and then just underneath it is the tree roots. It's... A, a, I don't even know what it is. It's kind of like a patch of grass or something. Um, but, but it's... Uh, so, so you see the log in the water right there? Directly to the left of that is where the fuzzy thing is appearing. That thing, yep. So grab that. Again, I've got no idea. It's like a... Probably some, some poor man's... <laughs> some poor man's two page got blown away. But anyway, that should be tw Article 23. Um, and then go over to the right... Back right corner. Use the pick with the icicles. Artifact 23 is what I meant to say. Uh, so use the pick with the icicles. Then walk back to the right-hand corner. Do this um, hidden object scene. Now, this time, to be honest, I just went nuts and smashed A until 
it all went right. So, yeah. Kind of got a bit, kind of just want to get it done now, to be honest. But anyway, solve the hidden object scene, get the spearhead. So I do apologise that I just sort of went and went straight in with that one there. Um, but in the inventory, we're going to use the wooden handle, combine the wooden handle and the spearhead. And then we can add the cord as well. That's going to get us makeshift knife. Oh, I've seen you played knifey spoony before. Uh, zoom in on the <laughs> fish head fountain, which is on the right hand side. There we go. And then we can pick up the earth emblem and the instruction scroll back out and then exit back to the rune world circle once more right so now we can zoom on these small light posts which again is just to the left just above the d-pad hud use the instructions with the light post we, we get in there we've got about 10 minutes or so no about 15 minutes left or so ish uh, grab the emblem put it in the slot now just following the instructions all you have to do is the bottom one you just have to click once, and then the top one, you just have to click once as well. So this bottom one, click until it's on the right. Then at the top, click the top one until it goes to the left. And then we can grab the all, the owl, and the elemental star, and then exit back to the chamber of earth. The first Harry Potter stuff. Yeah, Harry Potter. Zoom on the snake statue. Use the makeshift knife you spoony before with the earth emblem half, so the makeshift knife there with the earth emblem half to pop that out, pick it up, and we can just back out. We're going to walk up to the circle, which is basically in the middle uh, of the screen, the circle and triangle on the ground here. Now this, uh, we use the earth emblem on the slot. Now this is a mini game and a puzzle, but what, what we're going to do is we're just going to, you can try and solve it as quick as you can, but basically as you can see up on the D-pad, you've got to wait about 20 seconds or so until we're able to just uh, skip the puzzles. Uh, so again, you can try and work. You can try and work it out if you got a spare twenty seconds going. I couldn't be asked, so we're just gonna wait until it's ready and then press up on the D-pad to skip the mini game. Happy days. What that's gonna do is open up the stone door for us at the back. So zoom in on that. Use the makeshift knife, <laughs> the makeshift knife, you spoony. Use that with both of the vines, and that we should then be able to pick up the. Corked Gourd and the Fire Orb. And that's another Harry Potter film, that sounds like. Harry Potter and the Corked Gourd and the Fire Orb. Ugh. Back out to the Room World Circle. Uh, zoom in on the red portal, which is like the third one again. If you, Again, if you're going from one to four, left to right, so the third one. Use the Fire Orb with the pedestal, and now we can exit to the next Harry Potter film, The Chamber of Fire. Right, another two artifacts and scrolls. So the next one is a small dragon, sort of left of the dragon head fountain right there. So that's the 24th artifact. And the 23rd scroll is on a stone just to the left of the stairs in plain view. Yes, we've got one left. Come on, the boys. Right, use the fireplace tongs then with the hot stone in the bottom right-hand corner. Because again, you ain't handling that one no matter how good you are, Miss Sarah. Um, we've got the... Yeah, now, sorry, we can just head back and go into the very right chamber of water again. Sorry. Um, <laughs> right, zoom on the log, right in the middle of the water there. Use the hot stone with the ice. So, obviously, we have to go into our inventory there. Now, you don't use the hot stone with the log. That won't do anything. Use it with the ice. Because that's how normally you melt ice, right? Right. Right, pick up the ice emblem, back out, walk up to the tree on the left right there. Use the ice emblem with the slot, and again, this is another mini game, another puzzle to do. But 
we're just going to chill. We're going to kill. We're not going to smoke a bud. I did try to see if I could get this done within 20 seconds and ended up going to the completely wrong hole. So, well, it will be the first time I uh, went to go in the wrong hole. I, I, m mouth hole, by the way, you know, when you eat food and it goes down the wrong hole and you spew it all and choke the, that that hole, <laughs> of course. Anyway, now we just let's just move on, skip the mini game, get a frost rod, okay? Job done. Right, exit <laughs> back to the room world circle. Now we're going to go back to the third door, the chamber of fire. Man, Harry Potter's had enough now. Use the frost rod with the pot uh, pedestal on the bottom left. God damn, my English is. <laughs> Zoom on the big dish thing, sort of in the middle, kind of like this bowl thing. You need to pick up the fire seed, which apparently doesn't burn your hands off. But if you eat it, I bet that's going to burn your butt. Going to burn your butthole bad. Use the corked gourd with the dish and click it a few times. Um, and then we can pick it back up and then we can back out. Zoom on the dragon head on the right. Pick up the crucible. Again, the sort of wooden the, the metal or whatever it is, spoon ladle thing. Back out. Go back to the room word circle, and once again, go back to the chamber of water. Man, Harry's getting older here. Jesus. Right, use the empty gourd then with the waterfall to get some water. Again, you could have just done that yourself, or just go, found a random cup somewhere. Anyway, zoom in on the fish head fountain. Use the water with the dish. And what that's going to do then is uh, it's going to get us an ice seed. So, somehow... From whatever that is, that's going to get us an ice seed. So now we should have the fire seed and the ice seed. We can back out and then go back to the rune word circle. <laughs> rune world circle again. Right, now we can zoom on the area just below the floating portal. Which is kind of like this plant. We're going to use the water on the plant. That's how you get plants to plant. By using water on the plant. Plant, plant. Plant, 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 plant. Now we can walk up to the floating portal. We're going to pick the large leaf up and the stained glass frame. So we'll pick up those two, then we're going to back out. And we're going all the way to the left to the Chamber of Earth. Man, Hagrid's retired now. Hagrid's all done. He's given me his beard as well. So now I look like a man instead of a pubeless wonder. Ah, fantastic. Right, use both seeds, then the water with the dirt pile there on the bottom left-hand corner. Sorry, I was wondering where the dirt pile was. But it is bottom left-hand corner, so use both seeds, fire and ice, use the water on it. And that is going to turn to um, uh, these coloured berries. So that's what we're going to pick up. So make sure to pick up those coloured berries. Zoom in at the top of the stairs on the left. Use the coloured berries with the bowls. That's going to automatically do it for us. Thank you, game. Grab the pestle and use it with the berries. Or pestle. Pestle? Pestle? Like Nestle, but Pestle. Use water with the big cracked rock right there. And then apparently that somehow just turns into soft clay. So let's just pick that up. I don't know. It's soft clay now, so we're doing that. Right. In the inventory, combine the cracked lens and the soft clay. So there's the soft clay. Now we need to use the cracked lens on it. What that's going to do is just get us a cheeky little lens mold. Zoom in uh, right here on the snake statue once again on the right. Yes, that, that is lens mold. I don't know. <laughs> Sorry, don't know what I was looking at there. But we do have lens mold, so make sure you got that one. Zoom on the snake statue. Use the crucible with the sand, and then we can back out. And then we're going to go all the way back to the room world circle, and we're going back to the third door, the chamber of fury. All right. Zoom in on the dragon head. Use the sand with the lava. We're getting there, boys and girls. We're getting there. It's so close. Use the lens mold with the cracked ground. The cracked ground, of course, on the left-hand side there of the statue. You don't want to be sticking your nugget in that lava, I'm telling you. So use the lens mold and then use this, um, get, grab the crucible and use that with the lens mold. Then pick it up. Use the stained glass frame with the cracked ground now as well. And now we can grab the crucible again. Use that with the frame. Job done. Pick it up. Oh, that cooled nice and quickly. <laughs> Handy. Then we're going to back out. In our inventory, though, we're going to zoom on the lens mold. So zoom in on the lens mold. There it is. And click it. And that will get you a lens rather predictably. So now we can exit back to the room world circle. Go to the left, the chamber of earth. 
we are going to zoom in at the stone at the top of the stairs once again on the left we're going to use the clear glass with the slab sorry it's a tiring day these art effects monday games take it out you man Right, uh, use the paintbrush then with the cl colours, so you should have the clear glass on the slab. Use the paint paintbrush. <laughs> English is getting better and better all the time, apparently. Then we can pick up the glass-stained ornament. You paint it like an absolute numpty, but that's fine. It's all we need. Zoom on the snake statue, and then we can use the large lens with the pyramid. And then we need to click it twice until it's hitting the button at the back right there. So, there we go. That opens up the cliff door. Now we can pick up the crystal, ay ay ay, and then go back to the room world circle. So pick it off, pick it off, break it off, and now we can exit back to the room world circle. So go to the floating portal right above where Shadow Monster is. Use the stained glass on the ornament with a slot, and again we are coming up to yet another mini game slash puzzle to do. Again. Just you have to wait around fifteen to twenty seconds for it to order for it in order to be able to skip these mini games. But again, you can try and work it out if you want, which I tried doing. I managed to get one piece down, and that was about it. So hey, hey I suck. So press up on the D-pad when you can. Skip the mini game. I oh, see. I knew it was in that. I just you know messing around when I. <laughs> anyway, the fourth and final Harry Potter one is Chamber of Air. Now let us grab a the final artifact and scroll. The butterfly on the tree on the tree branch just above the propeller is where we're going to find the final butterfly, and grab the morphing master achievements. There's the butterfly, and the scroll is on the ground below the small opening and the bird. So kind of tricky to see potentially, but there's that one. So now you should have the morphing master, the legend hunter achievement, all artifacts and scrolls done. So now we can just continue with slapping out this game so walk up to the rock on the right do this hidden object puzzle to get a mermaid ornament count down the minutes baby Wow, much mermaid. Such ornament. So that's what we got. Mermaid ornament. Zoom on the propeller. And we're going to use the owl with lock. The all, whatever. Yeah, that thing. Uh, we're going to pick up the balloon and then we can back out. The balloon being, of course, the balloon looking balloon right there. Zoom in on the small opening with the bird just on the left hand side. We're going to use the elemental star now with this slot. We're going to pick up basically a, it's a vial of wind, but I'm going to call them a bag of Brussels sprouts, because that's basically what Brussels sprouts are. They're just a bag of compressed fart. Uh, anyway, back out, we're going back to the chamber of water, sorry, <laughs> get ahead of myself. Oh, <laughs> zoom on the log, we're going to use the leaf, and then we're going to use the Brussels sprouts. So put the leaf in there, and then use the vial of wind, the Brussels sprouts. Because you have one of those over Christmas time and you're crapping yourself for days. That's worse than a spicy Indian, I tell you. Anyway, now we can click on the fish head fountain after we've done that. Use the mermaid ornament with the slot. And now we can zoom in on the stone door. Pick up the strange fruit on the left-hand side. Or uh, take a pick to the crystal, whichever one you want to do first. But just make sure you've got the strange fruit and that you've used the pick with the crystal. Then... Then we can exit back and go to the Chamber of Fire. Zoom in on the on the dragon head once again. We're going to use the balloon with the ring. It's the random ring just chilling there. The Elden Ring Sting. Use the balloon with it. Back out. Zoom in on this stone door again. Pick up the lever. Click on the button. Click on the lever, lever, lever. Use the pick with the crystal. And we can exit back to the Room World Circle. Then go through the Chamber of Air. Ah, uh, losing my voice. Yeah. Right, Chamber of Air. Zoom in on the small opening and bird once again. Use the strange fruit with Chunky Monkey Bird Bag right there. And then pick it up. 
So apparently we're just sticking bird KFC birds in our pocket now. Tidy, okay. Right, use the bird with the kite, which is high up in the tree. She is bird. Um, that obviously gets us a damaged kite. Makes perfect sense. So in our inventory, we're going to zoom in on the kite. We're going to use our makeshift knifey spoonie with it. And then click it. And then what that's going to do is get us a nice couple of fabric strips. You know, you can make a cheat. You can make a bra out of that as well and sell that on for £2 on Etsy. Not worth it. Uh, pick up the wrapped stick there from the kite frame. Exit back to the room world circle and then go back to the chamber of fire. And we've only got two little bits left to do now, thankfully. Uh, but zoom on the ball sort of in the middle of the screen right there. Use the wrapped stick that we have with oil. There we go. Dippy dip dip. And that gets us an unlit torch. Then what we can do is also use the fabric strips with the oil as well. That's going to get us some sticky Vicky fabric. Sticky fabric. Sorry. S sorry to anyone called Vicky out there. I, I didn't mean to. Sorry. Uh, sticky fabric, I meant. <laughs> just zoom on Dragon Head. It's just because it rhymes, that's all. Uh, using the unlit torch with the lava, <laughs> it gets you the torch. Now we can exit back to the Room World Circle. Get to the Chamber of Air. Remember, you should have had that torch there from the uh, lava pit. Zoom on the propeller. Use the sticky fabric with the holes. Use the lever with the slot just above the lock right there. So make sure you're sticking that lever boy in. Click it. Back out. Zoom on the stone door. Use the torch with the hole. And again, this is one you literally could have just stuck your hand in and just touched. But there we go. I'm not an expert at these kind of things. Click the button, use pick with the crystal. Bam, buddy. Bam, girl. B -b -b Bam, girl. Now we can exit back to the real world circle. Click on the uh, cheap genie demon. And finally, and this is basically, uh, this is just, he's an evil spirit, uh, rather predictably. So there is a whole thing of what to do, but again, we're just going to skip the, um, we're just going to skip the puzzle, to be honest. Oh, I think I know what I'm doing now. Now I've just watched back, now I know what to do. But anyway, I don't care. We're just going to skip this anyway. Skip it, end the game, job done. What you should then get is the Saviour of Rune World and the Restorer of Balance Achievements. And that will be yet another Artifacts Monday game done. So, here we go then, guys and gals. So, thank you so, so much for watching. I do hope you enjoyed the game. I hope you enjoyed the guide and that it helped as well. If it did, of course, there's my gaggy. Uh, don't forget, of course, to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well. Don't forget to check me out on my socials, Twitter, Instagram, uh, Facebook, and Patreon. And again, a big massive shout-out to everyone who continues to support the channel on Patreon. There you go, you should have your 31 out of 31s. Um, and thank you to everyone who interacts with me on the daily as well. So, again, thank you so, so much for watching, guys and gals. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye-bye, big love.